200 otherwise I wouldn't have done it and it's a BSP that funky shape so now I got this ESP monster an Epiphone Les Paul monster a Schecter Flying V monster and a Schecter Telecaster type monster all of them need new pickups. This one is junk. I have to have the... See the toggle? So it's crap. I, you know, if I had my way, I'd just cut this and keep this pickup if it was good, but... Look, this thing is cranked. I'll crank it. That's totally cranked. And the toggle switch is down all the way, which means this pickup. Not this one. That's cranked.
got the boost on or the overdrive. So the uh, toggles messed up. So as you see, I had it all the way down just for the bridge. Chunk, chunk, and it's going clink, clink, clink. And I hit it a few times and I with the toggle switch, then it sounds good again. But now, see, it's sounding good. So just, it came with no strings, so I had to string it. That's why we've got this going on, because I don't like putting strings on guitars, but I did it anyways. Because I wanted to see if this thing worked. I still, okay, this is the question. If you got the guitar with no strings, it needs a setup, but it plays okay. I mean, I can, you know. Switch is screwed up. So I never know if it's going to sound pretty good or like crap. Uh, it looks, I mean, it's in good condition for the. What's really weird, and it does, you can see it says, you know, the LTD, that's the. That line of uh, monster guitars with that weird shape. I don't know what the hell it's called. I'm not an ESP guy. I don't like ESP guitars. It's just not my thing. It's weird because it's like ESP is a, a Japanese company, but they make these big, thick, fat Gibson necks. Nope. The reason I like Japanese guitars is because they make them small necks for little, small Japanese hands. Apparently. And that's good for me because that's what I prefer. This thing's got a big fat neck. But this is like the most... I don't know. It seems like a higher-end monster guitar that I've ever... Oh no, that Schecter... Uh, the lowest is the... the Whatever, the... Uh, Les Paul, Epiphone Les Paul 2, Special 2... But it plays great, and that was brand new, in-box wrapped. All of them have been brand new except for this. This was actually played by somebody that lived in Friendswood, Texas. That's where my guitar player from Fatal Attraction, Johnny Crystal Crypt, whatever the F he goes by, that's where he was raised. That's where I went for a month in uh, 89, 90, 90. He was going to go out to his parents for a month, and he, he wanted me to come with him. I thought, cool, you know. And then on the way out there, which is like a three-day drive, <laughs> he says, well, me and Trey and uh, who was in? Yeah, him and Trey. Because we had no drummer. We were looking for a drummer. And this is like the band meeting thing. It's band meeting time. As soon as I heard that, I knew that I was... Because I start the band. I name the band. I come up with the image for the band. I leave the band for personal reasons. Then I come back because those reasons work themselves out, I guess. There's, I think they're all going to hell now, but... Anyways, I came back to the band. I, I was out for about five, maybe six months. So when I, you know, they got, they were big. They were selling everywhere out, but I could, you know, people were telling me they were getting more cartoony. Like, you know, they were car literally like cartoons, and they weren't being serious. And they were getting this, you know, stupid group of people from Rocky Horror Picture Show because they were doing, uh, 
time warp for their encore. Stupid! And they had stupid tombstones that said, you know, here lies Judy, too much booty. Really? I go, dude, we get the names from the people, the witches that were burned in Salem, and we make those and we put those on the stage with pentagrams on the damn thing. And we come out and we look scary and scare people. This isn't a happy vampire thing. And the guy that took my place, he literally went and bought a costume. So he had spandex on, loser. But he's dead now, so he's not, you know, I'm sorry. Uh, Gary Scott, I think his name was. And a cape. And he... You know, had his hair slicked back, and no, 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 no. Now you're making it look stupid. So I came back in, brought it, you know, tougher, and tried to get that, you know, Motley Crew, too fast for love. Just when they were going between too fast for love and, uh, you know, the, the shout at the devil. So they had leather on. And high heels, but not platform boots. So, because I wore high heels in the, the band, the guitar player wore stiletto heels, and uh, the yeah, Trey couldn't. He just wore heels, but uh, every time he wore really high ones, he'd end up breaking them because he'd walk around like a scarecrow. I don't know why the hell he broke. The drummer, of course, didn't really matter. But I wanted to bring that image back. So we got it back, and it was heavier, and we were doing great. And then the drummer got in a car accident, wiped two people out, and it messed with him. So he was starting to do, you know, a little substance abuse going on. Hurt himself pretty bad. So he quit the band, and that really nailed us. And we went six months. We got another drummer because we had a bunch of gigs to play. Then we booted him because we found out he was deaf. So he had a deaf drummer. And he would go by, you know, the sound that he heard from the bass. Like, my punk, punk, punk. And then he'd, he'd like... He was, really, he was really right on time, but it was no feeling. It was just no groove to it. Where the previous drummer was like Peter Chris. This guy was like a drum machine. And then the next guy we got, J.D., was... Why am I telling you all this? Oh, because this guitar came from Friendswood, Texas. <laughs> Where my the guitar player from Fatal Distraction was, uh, was, I guess, born, raised, I don't know, but he lived there, and I went there for a month, and it was a nightmare, because they secretly, Trey and Johnny thought I drank too much. I was in a band. You can't drink too much. You can shoot up too much heroin, I thought, but... You couldn't drink too much. I always performed on stage perfectly. So I didn't see the problem. But So they were going to try to dry me out. But the dad said, okay, you know, I'll take care of you. Because that's not cool that, you know, my son brought you out here to dry you out. In August, in Texas, where it's hotter than shit. It's just below Houston, between Galveston and Houston. It was hell. So his dad would buy me, like, cases of uh, hams. <laughs> I'm like, hams? I'll drink anything. I don't care. So I was just pounding that stuff, and I think he bought another, not Olympia, but just these off beers, these old beers, but I was just pounding the damn things. So Johnny thought I was sober. We went out once to a club, and I got like six Long Islands and pounded them, and I got all wasted because I hadn't drank in a while and he got all pissed left me at the club in Houston no one knew where Friendswood Texas was so I went home with this girl to play Monopoly and I woke up the next day after we had been playing Monopoly all night and I'm like where am I and she said some somewhere Texas I don't even know and I go, do you know where Friendswood, Texas is? And she's like, no. I'm like, you're kidding me. I go, that's where I'm staying. I got to get back there. So it took me a whole day asking people, where's Friendswood? Then we got to Friendswood. Then we had to start asking people, do you know uh, Johnny Crypt or Gene McGurr or whatever the hell his name is? 
Finally, I found the house, and he was gone, because he knew when I came back I was going to murder him. And his mom's like, well, you shouldn't have got drunk and threatened to kick his ass. I'm like, I did? I got, I got drunk and threatened? Really? All of this, because this is from Friendswood, Texas, I'm telling you this horrifyingly long story. So I'm just going to cut it short saying, Friendswood, Texas is a nice place to visit. I'd hate to live there. And this piece of shit came from Friendswood. <laughs> and that's why the long story. ending. So, this is another friend. So, friend. Oh, son of a bitch. Um, another monster guitar. Hopefully there's no, many, no more out there because I'm tired of buying them. But every time I see them, I buy them. And I found another one of those flipping flying V's. The vodka one that I played the other day. The pink one. Bitchin'. Well, I guess I bitchin'd it too much because someone outbid me. These things were sitting on eBay, not selling for shit. I made a video, it's got about 70 views, and people were looking for them, and I got outbid. <laughs> so I gotta keep my mouth shut. So hey, go and buy these. This one is okay, I guess, when it works right, but it doesn't work right for now. All right, I'm done, too much talking. I'm gonna do a live thing uh, showing some friggin' uh, some singles and crap and pictures that I found, alright? That'll be probably tomorrow night or something. Later!